Hi, I'm Cray with Surface Water Solutions. Welcome to our next video in this series on HECRAS. Now, in our first video, we showed you how to make a 1D geometry directly in RAS Mapper without needing any other software. Now we're going to take that 1D geometry and we're going to use it to make a new digital elevation model. And the new DEM can be used as new terrain in any 1D, 2D, or coupled 1D, 2D model going forward. So I'm going to start with the model that we finished up with in that first tutorial. I've added a few cross sections to it, um, but you can see the 1D sections here and the water surface results. But if I turn off the results and the geometries and the map layers and just go in and cut a cross section across the river here, you'll see that our LiDAR data completely missed the bathymetry. It just shot right to the water surface as if it was concrete, dirt. Um, HECRAS is not going to see that as effective conveyance area, so we need to build in the bathymetry. To make those edits, we're going to need to get out of RAS Mapper, and we'll need to come right back into the Geometry Viewer. In the Geometry Viewer, I'm going to take my original terrain, which had no bathymetry in it, and save this as an orphan geometry. I'm going to call this 1D Bathymetry. And now I've got an orphan model. Now, if you have taken one of my classes before, you're familiar with the schematic view of HECRAS and how it's set up, where we take uh, geometries and flow files and link them together under a plan. In this case, we're looking at a terrain, which is an orphan geometry. So it won't be linked to any plan or any flow file. It's just sitting by itself and it's going to be used to make a new geometry or a new terrain file in RAS Mapper without uh, linking to any hydraulics. Now the steps for doing this are fairly easy. What's not easy is getting the actual data. You may need to estimate this based on what you've seen out uh, on site. You may take some aerial photos that have low flow conditions um, and try to best estimate where the low flow thalweg is uh, traveling here. Or you may have actual bathymetric surveyed cross sections that you're going to insert. In any case, putting them in the model is not the issue. Getting the data may be the issue. So if I take any given cross section here and edit the cross section, I have two different ways of putting bathymetry in. Uh, number one, I can just insert a section here or insert some uh, rows into my uh, coordinate data here, or I can go in and graphically edit this. So if I wanted to go in, for example, and add a few station elevation points, I can put them in like this, and then I can move them around and put them down where they need to be. The other alternative, if I wanted to put these cross sections in um, or the bathymetric data in manually, I could go in, if I look in the lower right here, I can see that I'm at about 145, I'm negative five, so I could come down here to my data, find 145, insert a row, put that in here and give it a value. And once I apply that, you can see this extra point came in here, which I could then go back in and manipulate graphically or adjust the points as needed. So if you had actual bathymetric survey data, you could just go in and insert that here. Now we're going to manipulate the terrain between the bank stations. So I've actually set these bank station lines to line up with the edge of the water here. Um, HECRAS and the Geometry Viewer won't show you those bank station lines, but they will become very important. How you've drawn them is where HECRAS will interpolate cross sections or interpolate terrain data um, for the new DEM that you're going to create. Now in this video, I'm going to spare you the time of uh, manipulating all 30 of these cross sections and I'm going to go ahead and do that manually. But to show you what I have done here, um, I'll go into the profile view and you'll be able to see right here, this is the one section that I've manipulated. This is what I had before where the LiDAR had shot straight to the water surface and now I'm going to put in a bunch of cross sections down this way. So I'll go back into my geometry viewer here and I'll pause the recording while I go make the edits to these other 30 cross sections and I'll see you in just a second, which will be just a blip on your video, but uh, it might take me a couple minutes to do this uh, for real. So you might have seen my screen jump there just a little bit, but uh, what I did was just went in and did the same thing that you just saw uh, through the graphical editor and uh, replacing some of the values. Um, with the actual bathymetric values that I want to see. So now what I can tell here in my cross-section view is that I've got the existing terrain, which shot right to the water surface through the LiDAR, and I've got my new points here. And as I scroll through those, I've got bathymetric data at each of my cross-sections, and I can see which cross-sections I'm looking at um, as I move up and downstream along this river channel here, all the way down to the bottom one. And the other thing I can check out here, just to make sure this worked, is my profile view. Remember how it was flat before? Now I've got a sloping profile. 
So with that, I'm done with my geometry. I'll go ahead and save this. And now I need to come back into my RAS Mapper. So with RAS Mapper open, I'm now going to take this geometry, which I've just created, called 1D Bathymetry, and I'm going to export this layer. Now, you could go out to the ends of the cross sections right here, which will then blow out all the terrain in between each cross section and interpolate it um, with the data that was taken directly at these cross sections. And it will go all the way out to a straight line that connects the endpoints of these cross sections. In this case, I've drawn my bank station alignment along the water surface's edge. So I'm going to choose channel only. When I export this geometry as channel only, I can then choose a resolution. So I'll call this one bathymetry. And I'm going to choose a one meter resolution just to show that it can be different from my underlying terrain, which is five meters. Um, you could make them the same or you can make it uh, refine it as much as you'd like. But uh, now that I've made this, it says it exported this. I don't see it anywhere. I won't see it until I right click here on my terrains and make a new RAS terrain. In this case, I'm going to stack them together. I'll take my new one, which is called bathymetry, and my original, which was called the five meter resolution. I've got a one meter on top, a five meter on the bottom. Don't ever leave this just as terrain. If you want to keep your file management correct, you need to make sure and say something about this. I'll say this is existing bathymetry merged. That reminds me of what uh, I'm actually going to be looking at when I create this terrain, because now I'm going to need to merge this terrain together um, or associate this terrain with my geometries. So what this is doing um, while we're waiting, I'll explain a little bit about this. In between the red lines that you'll see over here, um, it is taking the cross-sectional data and interpolating it out along those red lines from section to section. So once I've done that, if I close this, I'll turn off my geometries, uh, I'll turn off the results so you can see this a little better, and I'll even turn off the map layer so we can just see the terrain that we're looking at. And what you'll see here um, is the original, because that's still on top, but when I turn that off, you can barely see there what just happened. Um, you'll see it a little better now when I turn on my contour intervals. If I take those down to a one meter interval, um, I'll make these a uh, different color here so you can see them a little better. Uh, you'll be able to see that I've got bathymetry um, contours in my channel so that when I chop this thing here with a cross section, instead of what I saw before, uh, which was a flat line, I've got a new terrain that actually has the bathymetry built in. And that way I can run a new 2D model um, without having to do any 1D um, geometries if I'd like to do it that way. So I hope you enjoyed that little uh, tutorial. This is exactly the same uh, feature that you see in the HECRAS manual. What I'm going to show you next is how to take this feature, which exists in order to put bathymetry into a channel, and we'll turn it upside down and make dams and levees and roadways out of it. And we'll also make detention basins and some other features. You can use this and be as creative as you'd like with it. Put any feature you'd like into your terrain. So I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Thanks for watching. Give us some suggestions on what you'd like to see next. Thanks. Goodbye.